Zach here with Catfish Z. Today I'm going to be going over how to catch bait fish with a cast net. So what you're going to want to do first is get yourself a cheap five gallon bucket from Walmart. It runs about two to three dollars. Um, that's just for storage. You can get a top as well. Just, just for storage for the cast net. It's really easy to store a cast net in this type of container. Um, and what you do is you know, find yourself a cast net. Go on Amazon, you'll find plenty of different brands. Um, I'll put a link in the description below of the brand that I have. Um, but basically, it's just a larger net that comes with weights on the bottom. And then it comes attached to a rope. And what you do is the rope goes over your wrist at the end of the handle. And then you, you know, pick up the rope and get to the end of the cast net and you just pick up a little bit of the cast net um, with the hand that has the rope handle and then you grab the bottom of the weight with your other hand and basically do a spinning formation and throw forward um, with the cast net to get the cast net to fully open um, you let it sink as far as you do necessary so you don't get stuck on any rocks or anything um, and you target the bait fish um, I'm going to be showing you how to do that here shortly Alright guys, I'm out here at my secret bait fish catching spot. Um, basically what you want to do is find a bridge that is low down over some water where you're legally permitted to cast net some fish. Um, pretty much the bait fish love to hang out underneath the bridge to escape the heat. Um, usually I come out here when it's dark out. I uh, didn't have the time this morning. I needed to get some sleep. So I'm out here a little bit later in the day. It's around 9.30 right in the morning right now. Um, you can still catch bait fish. It might be a little more difficult. You might have to do a little bit of searching around the bridge. You might have to try to throw underneath the bridge or closer to it. Yep, so basically just throw your cast, out, cast net out and hunt for some bait fish. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and get my cast net ready. As I was explaining before, you put the loop over your wrist. I loop it around one more time just for extra security. Pull it towards you. You don't want to loop it up like a rope that you're going to be storing away. You just put it in your hand casually. And a few knots in it. I can get those out later if I want to. They're not a big deal right now. So, I'm holding it casually right here. You get some of the cast net maybe six inches to a foot down and grab it with that same hand. Then you get one of the weights and you put it in that same hand as well. Then go down hmm, probably a five feet down maybe up to five feet probably less than that like three feet down and you grab some of the some of the cast net with your other hand. Then you open up the cast net real wide and pivot your hip your hip back on the side where you have the cast net mainly in your hands. Since I'm right handed, it's in my right hand, I'm going to pivot my right hip back and have my left foot going forward. Basically, you just pivot forward and let go and it goes out. See? Opened up really nice, that was a really good throw. Um, now here there are a lot of rocks. Um, so if you're closer to the shoreline over there, you're not going to want to actually even cast over there. You're, I've gotten stuck before and broke my cast net. Here, I'm fine going to the bottom. Looks like it hit bottom. Can pull it up. Okay, unfortunately, I didn't get anything with that throw. So, I just try again. Alright guys, and I'll keep doing this until I find some fish. More than likely, see I'm, I'm actually going for shad today, threadfin shad and gizzard shad. More than likely the fish are underneath this bridge right here, the roadway and the bridge, because it's hot out. That's more than likely where they are. In the early morning hours, I usually come out here around, well, somewhere between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. 
And if it's nighttime dark out, you're going to find them too because it's not as hot out. There's not heat pounded down on all the fish. You're more than likely going to find them popping all, all over the place on the water. Now if I'm going to go in the middle right here, I should tie on an extension, um, a longer rope, because it's not going all the way to the bottom and the shad could be hanging out on the bottom down there. All right, but yeah, this is pretty much how you throw a cast net. Um, this is where you should be hunting for bait fish, is around bridges, because more than likely that's where you're going to find a lot of threadfin shad, small gizzard shad, and I found adult gizzard shad too, um, over 12 inches. Hard to find, but you can find them. But yeah, if I catch anything, I'll update you guys and let you know. Other than that, this is how you throw a cast net and find bait fish. Okay guys, so I decided to go a little bit shallower on this bridge, um, and I did end up catching a few shad, um, a few th threadfin shad, not bad. These are actually good size to start. Any smaller than this, you just want to release them, that way they get bigger, um, and you're not killing the small baby population of sh threadfin shad. But yeah, not bad, let's get some more. Okay guys, so if you are in an area where you're fishing, um, in the same place that you're catching your bait. Sorry for all the noise. If you're in an area where you're fishing in the same place you're catching your bait, you're going to want to bring a five gallon bucket, fill it with the same water from where you're catching the bait, and get yourself a cheap aerator from Walmart. This is just a bubble box portable aerator. Get the bigger one. Creates more bubbles, creates more oxygen for the fish. For Walmart, it's like 10 bucks. Cheap, effective. Get some energizer high energy batteries i've had these same batteries in here for at least two weeks i've been using this every time i go fishing it runs for hours has not lost any efficiency with the bubble pretty good but yeah so put them in the bucket make sure to fill it up almost all the way and this should keep them alive pretty good threadfin shad uh, are not very stable they die pretty easily die very quickly no oxygen they'll die it's just how they are see Already they're swimming upside down. They just get stressed too easily and then they just die. Don't know why. So keep that water, try to keep it around the same temperature as the water um, that you have in this body of water. You know, just replace it sometimes. Take some water out, add some water in, just bring a smaller cup with you or something. A measuring cup will work good, just a cheap plastic 99 cent measuring cup for Walmart. Um, also, you're gonna want a cooler. Um, with a cooler, if you're keeping the bait for later, you're gonna wanna put the bait directly on ice. I have this cooler filled with ice right now. If you don't put the bait directly on ice, and it's in the heat, if, if it heats up too much, it's gonna get really mushy, and then the bait is useless. All right, so if you put it in cold ice water, or just ice directly, it's going to keep a lot longer later. What I'm going to do, I'm not even going to salt this thread from Chad. I'm not going to dry it out. I'm going to put it in my fridge. Um, as soon as I get home, I'm going to put it more towards the back of the fridge so it stays colder. Not frozen. Just the back of the fridge. It might freeze a tiny bit, but it's going to keep longer. Um, this bait should keep for at least a week or two with this method, um, is what I've uh, come to find out. Just don't let it get too hot, even when you have it in your cooler when you're going fishing. But yeah, let's catch some more bait. Alright guys, this is the gizzard chat I was talking about earlier in the video. This one's probably about 8 inches. Um, they do get a lot bigger than this. 12 inches or so. Um, this makes amazing bait for catfish. Okay, Way better than the threadfin. This stuff lasts a lot longer. Um, the fish live a lot longer. Um, the bait stays on the hook better. So yeah, you can get yourself one of these. Or a few of them. Definitely keep them. Highly suggest it. Okay guys, what I wanted to let you know is you can get some accidental catches in your cast nets. Here I got three bass. 
Look to be largemouth bass, spotted bass. So what you do, all you do, take a Mary cast net, throw them back. There they go. North Carolina, it's illegal to cast net bass. It's illegal to cast net bluegill and many other fish. Um, the only thing I really know of that you can cast net, uh, at least inshore in the fresh water, is shad. All right, on one of my cast net throws, I just hit a whole school of shad. Got about 20 shad in there. It's not too bad. A couple more like this and I'll be good. All right, guys, after a couple of hours of doing this, um, I was able to, you know, cast net more than enough fish for a week or two, um, as long as I store them correctly. Um, like I said, if you do this at night, or early in the morning when it's still dark out in the spot I'm at at least and I've heard you know other places are the same um, you're gonna catch fish a lot faster uh, the bait fish rather um, I mean when I come to this spot early in the morning at you know 3 30 4 o'clock in the morning there are fish just hitting the top of the water jumping all over the place I throw a cast net out and almost any spot and you're guaranteed 20 to 30 fish at a time so yeah like I said dark is best but hey if daytime's all you got like I had today you can still net you some just it might take longer you can find them though might go faster found a couple of schools and I got you know 20 30 shad in each school the good size ones too so and you can't always go shallow you might have to add some extension like I have I have some extra paracord on here to extend this uh, cast net further into the water um, you might have to do that so you can get down to the bottom and a few of those times we got to the bottom is when I hit those big schools of shad so this is Catfish Z signing out y'all have a good day